Welcome back to the second issue of the day. The Allah figure for your Oba Lamidi, Adeyemi Chu, has revealed that Nigeria will continue to wallow in insecurity and other crises if traditional rulers are not given the constitutional role in the governance, in the governance of the country. The Oba faulted the federal government's tactics of inviting traditional rulers when the country is facing crisis or in a state of insecurity. He noted that the abolition of traditional rulers' roles and influence from the 1999 constitution may cause peace to elude Nigeria if traditional rulers are continuously disregarded in the administration of their local territories. Still joining us to discuss this is uh, Mr. Bola Oba. Yes, Mr. Bola Oba, let's look at uh, the import of what the monarch had said. How you know, uh, 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 what's your reaction to that, to start with? To be very honest with you, uh, when the political leadership of a country, or uh, when the elected leadership of a country is uh, floundering, or when it does not seem to have its acts together, every preachment will be thrown at it. Everybody who, who, who should have a message and everybody who does not even have a message would want to, uh, it, it's like a game of, it's like a, a game of value. Uh, once you don't have a handle of your game, every bystander would, would uh, um, um, a, very traditional Yoruba man. And I'm one who knows the history of Yoruba land. And indeed, how, pre, how in pre-colonial times, we, we used to, uh, we used to uh, elect, quote unquote, or we used to get our rulers. And I must say that the circumstances prevailing now have been so rigged and so bastardized that I wonder what is the difference in the, in the warped and bastardized mechanism through which an average Yoruba traditional ruler is is selected now from the political class hmm. that the that the electors still have the opportunity of changing every four year cycle or who have constitutional limitation to a maximum of two terms or eight year tenure. Okay. However, a tra traditional ruler, we know from contemporary Yoruba history also, and indeed in other parts of the Niger in other parts of the country, that the longer a traditional ruler stays on the on the on the stool, the more influential he becomes, hmm. and the more of an institution he becomes, and the more of alleged cases of abuse of privilege that will, that will be garnered against him. So that is my, my, my opening salvo on this topic. Good. So let, let's, let's look at um, the, the, what the, the monarch is actually referring to. Now, for example, we know what the Oba of Bini did, I mean, what he did during the, uh, uh, in the build-up to the election, and people will say, oh, thank God for the monarch's uh, intervention. We also remember some issues that have to do with upheaval, any form of uprising. We're always running to this, you know, institutions to come to our aid. So we are looking at how do we make it a permanent thing that these people have roles to play, it's not just about running to them when it's when we have crisis.
Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, fantastic. So, you want to repeat the latter part of your question again? Okay, what? I had your uh, allusion to the role, the peacemaking role of the Oba of Benin during the last gubernatorial elections in Edo State. Uh, that we they are, are saying, always running. Okay, we are saying it. Okay, exactly. You got me correctly. So, I'm saying that. What more could they be asking for in asking for constitutional role? What exactly could they be asking for to make sure that these people are not just there to respond to some once of crisis, but rather they are part of the structure to curtail any form of crisis from being escalated? If you have a governance structure that allows an institution not to be ultimately accountable to the people. If you have a governance structure that allows an institution that gives life tenureship to the occupant of that institution, if you have a governance structure where uh, the, the, the popularly elected, the popularly elected uh, uh, office of the governor or the president is left at the same level of relevance or operational, operational relevance with another institution where there is permanence of, of office, you are calling for crisis. Hmm. As, influ as, as influential uh, as, as Merchants of cultural, traditional influence, yes. Having constitutional role, I want to ask constitutional role in what respect? Hmm. Constitutional role as the chief security officer of the state when in most states there is no traditional ruler whose, whose uh, uh, cultural and traditional uh, uh, precinct covers the whole state. In every state of this generation, you have multiple traditional rulers. So, is it as chief security officer just of their of their own little little area? Is it as the chief executive officer officers of their own little little areas? I'm sitting there now wanting to know the order of the constitutional integration that, that the, the respected Alafi desires. What form of constitutional integration okay. beyond but, they are constitutionally recognized? You, you must remember that they are, they are constitutionally recognized. I agree. But let's look at it this way. They are subsumed under the powers of the governor of exactly. the state. Because until an official staff of office is handed over by a governor, no, no, exactly. Okay, let's let, let me quickly uh, assist you or remind you because I know you should remember. Let me just remind you some of the um, issues before the current constitution. We remember. The revered Alafi of Oyo, the role he was playing in the pre colonial and even during the colonial era, when we know that this is the political head of the Yorubas. And when you are talking about the, uh, um, the Oni now, we are talking about the religious head. Now, we know that it's almost impossible to have that again. As we speak, when there are traditions that are being done, the constitution does not even support them to keep people you know, back home. So we are looking at, is there a middle ground they can still allow them have their kind of influence without necessarily, you know, impinging on the rights of Nigerians? Before I specifically answer your question, let me take you to what is happening presently in Thailand. What, do you know what is happening in Thailand as we speak? A series of protests in the last as we speak, almost at least more than three months, 
And you know the reason why the students, you know, majority of the students in Thailand, you know why they are protesting? They are protesting the less majestic rule uh, in the constitutional order of Thailand. And you know what? The same less majestic, the same less majestic rule was in place when the last king of Thailand was on his throne, reigned for, for more than 50 years and he was so popular. Hmm. But because a new king ascended the throne and his lifestyle is such that his lifestyle is testing the integrity of decency in that office, people are now becoming more vociferous in campaigning for the reduction of the powers of the monarch, and indeed in campaigning for a constitutional review of the less majest, majesty rule. So I'm sitting here now, having seen the world and knowing what prevails in where most monarchs have, have absolute, or in, in most societies where there is absolute monarchical system, we know. The, we know the, 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 the problems they, they do have there. Occasionally when they have characters, I don't want to go to the other. Now, when they have characters whose, whose morality is inconsistent with the dignity of the office, that's number one. Number two is that if you want to go the way of the constitutional monarchy that we see in England and some of the Scandinavian, and the Scandinavian the Arab societies, world. Or in the or in Netherlands, then we will speak to the fact that those societies are holding are only beholding. Each of those societies is only beholding to one one monarch. But I'm telling you now that he, that six kilometer radius to where I sit now in Lagos, six kilometer radius to where I'm sitting in Lagos now. I know of nothing less than three traditional rulers. Who then takes preeminence? And who takes who takes the constitutional relevance that they allow to seek? Hmm. Awesome. So, in other words, I, I, I want to believe that uh, you're still a custodian of the culture, the no matter what. The so, pre-colonial Yoruba land, it was the quest, it was the quest for other Yoruba civilizations mm -hmm. that made them not only to move from Ife and Oyo to form Yoruba kingdoms. And historically, even from Odudua, there are seven crown, crown beholding okay. children of Odudua. Exactly. Forget about that. The greatest Yoruba civilization before the arrival before the arrival of okay. the colonialists was the Ibadons because the Ibadons ultimately served the Yorubas. Okay, Balaba, Balaba, sorry, uh, my time is fast spent. I would like to quickly ask the last question before we round up and you just have 60 seconds to see what you can do with that. And that has to do with some of these examples you made, there's no time for us to also look at them critically. As we speak, we've had the, the, the Queen of England for years. And for people, for some of us who have been there, we still see that this culture is upheld. This culture is respected. And how do we have that kind of influence by these you know, traditional rulers so that they are not taken for granted, they are not treated as people who run to these political leaders for, for, you know, for handout. Maybe in the next 60 seconds, if you can help us deal with that. Stubalaba, oh, it's unfortunate. I guess uh, we've lost that connection. Okay, I understand the network is hanging. I'm so sorry we are not able to look at that. What I was actually looking out for is to see you respond to how they will ensure that our culture is not um, discarded. Please, in the next 60 seconds, I understand you're back. Hello, yes, I'm back. Did you hear my question? You said... 
how do we ensure that irrespective of the civilization, irrespective of whatever is happening, we do not lose that respect for the stool across the country, just like we still have it in England. The Queen of England, even the national anthem hasn't changed right from inception. What, what is imperative at this juncture is for each traditional ruler who is fortunate to ascend the throne of his forebears to bring dignity to the office. To bring dignity operationally to the office. Many traditional rulers are becoming apocryphal to the governance order of Nigeria as we speak because many of them are traducing the dignity of of, okay. of the stools that they have been fortunate to ascend. The reason why the Allah was invited to some of the meetings he was invited is the fact that in the sociological or the sociocultural uh, 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 picture of today's Nigeria, we know that they are still relevant exactly. as influencers, as cultural and traditional influencers. We know that they are still relevant as cultural and traditional gatekeepers. But the degree to which a traditional ruler brings dignity to that office by being value others to his, to his subjects, quote unquote, okay. by being value others. Uh, to their societies, okay. the, that degree will instruct the degree I'm to so sorry. which even uh, elected no, 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 officers... No thanks to Network. I'm sure you have much to say, but we have to call it a wrap. With you, Bolaoba is a public affairs analyst, and I think uh, you've done a whole lot for us tonight, and we quite appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bolaoba. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity once again. Good. And thank you, viewers. Before you go, let's quickly take a short breather and I will be giving you my take. Please, don't go anywhere. Here's my take. Voting out inactive lawmakers and scrapping of one chamber in the National Assembly are not actually the same thing. While the former may be an immediate solution which may not necessarily reduce any cost, the latter is targeted at reducing wastage in governance, thereby diverting such funds to infrastructural development and even social welfare. What the Senate president meant by invitation to anarchy is yet to be conceived. As days go by, one thing is sure, situation itself may call for this inevitable reform, especially if the cost of governance is not reviewed downward. I insist that there is no justification to almost 10% of the nation's budget being dedicated to less than 1,000 people out of 200 million people. This is a food for thought, and we sincerely hope that indeed there will be equity and justice for all. And that's my take on Plus Politics tonight. Plus Politics returns on Monday with another fresh topic where we will be dissecting and looking at issues as they come. I am Kayode Ladeine, saying bye for now.